Today we're going to talk about building a company page for your business on Facebook. So pages are public, they're easily shareable, they're a great way to list products, share more about your business, give company updates, etc. So we'll start with creating a personal profile. So the personal profile, basically we're just using that so that we can become an admin on the company page. You do have to start with a personal profile in order to create the business page. So if you go to facebook.com, you'll go ahead and just sign up, your first name, last name, email, um, and set a password. So you will receive an email um, that will just ask you to confirm the account. They'll just make sure that they have the correct email on file. You'll go ahead and confirm, and then you'll set up your profile. Um, now, if you are going to be the admin on your company page, make sure your profile is set up in a way that you're comfortable with people seeing that connection. So for example, the profile picture, um, just make sure it's something that you're comfortable with when it's attached to your business. So you'll go ahead and upload a photo. We're creating um, April May for April May's flower shop. So we'll add a photo and then we'll just go ahead and we won't do a lot with this profile as we're just showing you kind of the basic steps to get to the point where we're building out a page. So from here, we'll go ahead and access the news feed, and then in the upper menu bar, you'll see create, and you'll click on page. This is where you'll be able to create your business page. As we mentioned, pages are public. They're easily shareable. It's a great place to interact with potential leads, current customers, run promotions, um, as well as kind of take a look at analytics and see who's visiting your page, who is interested in your business, and just gain some more insight into your your clientele or your customer base that way. So you'll go ahead and click on create business page and then go ahead and put in your name and category. The category will just sort of depend on the type of business that you are. Feel free to kind of browse through. Um, you can just, you can look at a list of all the different options there. Um, most likely you'll be in uh, retail, but just feel free to select the thing that is, you know, most pertinent to your company. And then you'll go ahead and put in address information and contact information for the brand. Once you have all of your contact information entered, you'll click continue. And then it'll ask you to upload a cover photo. So we're actually going to pause here for a moment and talk about some different sizes. Um, you will want to make sure that you create a graphic that is optimized to the appropriate size that Facebook recommends. So we're going to put a screen up that'll show you some sizes for different things that you just kind of should be aware of. Feel free to screenshot or just take notes and jot these down. So for the cover photo, you're going to want to use a photo that's 820 by 312 pixels. And then the profile picture will be 180 by 180. The posts are 1200 by 630 and event cover photos will get into a little bit more later. Um, of course, if you are more into graphic design and you have Photoshop, definitely feel free to use that. There are a lot of good free resources available as far as making custom social posts or Facebook covers. So we'll put up a slide with that as well. Um, Canva is what we typically use if, if we're not using Adobe. We love Canva at Joseph Studios. It's a really great tool, very intuitive, um, super user friendly. There are different levels as far as pricing but you can get done uh, the basics with the free option. Uh, Placeit.net's another great one, Snappa, the, of course the Adobe Suite and then Crello, but feel free to look those up um, as well to find the best one for you. And we'll actually jump into Canva quickly just to show you kind of the simplicity of it and what it looks like to create a cover photo. So hop on over to canva.com and you'll actually go to create design 
you can start typing in Facebook cover or whatever type of graphic you're looking for. And if you click on that, it's going to create a template that will be the exact size you need. So our business, our, our fake business here is April May's Flower Shop. So we are going to show a picture of a flower. Feel free to use, of course, um, a picture of your storefront, people within your business, something that relates to your company, maybe some products. But with Canva, you can kind of spice it up a little bit. Um, so we'll just download that design and it will be the exact size we need. And actually, while we're here in Canva, let's go ahead and make the profile picture as well. So because this is a 180 by 180, um, you know, again, feel free to use any image that you feel is good for your business. But what we typically like to do is use this opportunity to display our logo. So for this fake business that we are creating, we don't have a logo currently, but Canva, again, is a really great place to do that. If you just type in logos, it'll bring you to some really good templates for this um, particular design we did go ahead and just size it to the 180 by 180 pixels and we'll just create a logo together. Now if you are creating a logo for your business if that's something that you haven't done yet or you'd like to make a new one just um, keep a few things in mind. You will want of course this is a square but the profile picture that will come through uh, that you'll want the main graphic to be centered in the middle um, so that it fits into the circle. as it is displayed that way on Facebook. You'll also want to keep this fairly simplistic. Um, it is a small image. And if you are creating a logo and you're going to want to eventually print it onto items or maybe you know make t-shirts, you'll want it to be a fairly basic design. Not a lot of text. Um, we'll actually take some of this text away, but keep it more of a graphic. And even the graphic part of it, of course, make that you know, as simple as you can while representing your business. So we'll just throw a flower in here for April May's flower shop. Again, that's a little bit busy, so we'll we'll go with something a little more simple. And once we have the design that we want, we'll just again download uh, just as a PNG, PNG, I'm sorry, or JPEG. And then we'll hop back over to Facebook and we'll click on the profile image upload and upload our new design. We've also gone ahead and just added the cover photo in. So we already have a really great, great presence um, for our the start of our business page. All right, now we'll go into settings, which you'll find in the upper right-hand corner of your page, page info, and just update all of the information about our business. So a description of the company, location, hours, this is where you'll put all of that very important information. And you'll want to make sure that this is updated. If anything does change, especially hours are a huge thing to keep in mind, make sure that you do go back into this page info section under settings and update those, as well as any address changes, or you'll just want to make sure you keep this as updated as possible as Facebook business pages are a place that a lot of people go when they're trying to learn more about a business or maybe even you know stop in if you do have a physical location.
And you can also put a price range if that's important to you. It is sometimes helpful for, for people on Facebook to see that information and just get a feel for that before they stop in or start browsing your products. And this will all show in the About section of your page. So we'll check that through and now let's hop into page roles. So in page roles, we'll be able to assign other admins or editors to the page. So if you do have a marketing team or you have you know, somebody else on your team that you would like to have access, you'll just go ahead and add them here by just um, starting to type in their name and their Facebook page will come up and you'll be able to decide what type of role they should have. So let's talk through the different roles quickly that Facebook gives us an option to use. So an admin will have the most authority. They'll have access to all different um, items as far as editing the page, creating and deleting posts, sending messages, creating ads, etc. An editor will be great for employees who create content for the business's Facebook page and manage day-to-day but isn't at that level of an admin where they don't have access to, you know, credit cards to run ads. A moderator is going to be a good fit for employees who handle customer service for a business. They can answer questions, respond to comments, but can't create content for the page. An advertiser um, will actually only be able to create ads, and an analyst has the least amount of control and access to all the page roles, but can view Facebook page insights. So an employee who works with content strategy and planning might be giving given the analyst role. And of course, as your position as the owner, you'll be deciding who has each role and just kind of keeping on top of that and making sure that if people leave the company and you need to make those changes, those are updated frequently. So we'll go ahead and add an admin. It'll ask you to re-enter your password to confirm. And then the person that we added will get a notification saying that we added them as an admin and they have the um, ability to accept or, or decline. So do have that conversation ahead of time so that they know to expect that notification coming in. Okay, next let's visit the about section. As we mentioned, what you set up in the settings, the about info, that'll show here, but you'll also have some other opportunities to share more about your business. So if you notice the Our Story section, we'll go ahead and click on that. And this will be a great place for you to talk a little bit more about your business, why you started, um, you know, what it is that motivates you, things like that. This is kind of to add a personal touch. You'll go ahead and add a photo as well. And again, just make sure that it's something visually appealing that fits with your company. It can be people that work within the company, the storefront. In this case, we're just using flowers as it represents what our flower shop does. Um, and then of course you'll create a title and just write up something personal. You know, again, how you got your start, what you do. And you can add photos here too to kind of spice it up. And we'll give my computer a second to catch up here. Again, just make this the story something engaging. This is a really great place for people who might be interested in your company to read more about you. And you'll really want to just draw them in here. So 
So we'll just kind of go ahead it for the sake of time. We'll leave this as is. Um, but once you have that all set up, you'll just publish and it'll show there on the right hand corner. And it'll show when that you're on the page as well, not just in this about section. Now from here, you can also change your username and you will want to do that. You'll want to put your company page in here and that'll be the tag. If people, um, you know, go to tag you or share your page, that's what they'll use. So you will want to update that. Okay, let's jump into talking about Facebook groups. So we at Joseph Studios use Facebook groups consistently to market a brand. Um, it's a really great way to find other people who might be interested in your company, your products, your services, and just another place to interact with people or bring them over to your page. So a couple things that you can do um, is join other groups that are in your industry to kind of learn from them, see what they're doing, you know, just gather ideas about what's working well, what isn't working well. You can follow groups. Um, once you're in the group, you'll have the ability to follow the page, communicate in the group, kind of, you know, however much time you want to put into it, but it will be a really great way to connect with other like-minded people. Uh, we also do recruit from other industry groups. So this is a really good way to, if you create a group for your business, if you're wanting to find people who you'd like to have in that group, who could be potential customers, clients, leads, you can find similar groups and just let people within the group know, hey, I have this group too. I think you might really enjoy it. So in this case, you know, I might join other gardening groups and reach out to individual members and say, hey, I've started this group for gardening. Um, you know, I think that you would find value in it. I see you're also in this gardening group. So, you know, feel free to check it out. It's also just a really great way to create conversation and engagement with potential um, potential shoppers, potential leads. So we'll just walk through kind of an example here of creating a group. So you go to groups on the left-hand side of your page and then create group. You'll name the group. So in this case, we will do a gardening group as it is something that's appropriate. With the groups, you're not necessarily trying to make money. You're doing something that will engage with other people who have an interest and could potentially down the road um, turn into a, a sale for a customer. So like we did with the page, there is a um, group cover photo. And we actually did already create one. We'll just upload that now. Again, this is another great time to use Canva or the Adobe Suite to create that size that you'll need for the, um, for the group image. And we'll go to About, and we'll be able to add a description. So I typically like to do something like a place for people to connect and grow. You know, obviously this will depend on the type of business that you are, but the whole idea of this group is to create a community around the industry that you're in. So in this case, you know, gardening is a, a really great fit for a flower shop. We'll create a group that is focused around gardening. You can also create topics, which are a really good way to sort posts. They're good for admins to kind of monitor too. If you do have a lot of people posting, they can use a topic and you can sort through by that specific topic. They work similar to a hashtag. So they'll tag that post that um, when the person you know puts in a post, they'll be able to use the topic as a tag and then you'll be able to sort this way. And I don't know if I mentioned, so kind of the beauty of groups, this is very important, is that everybody can post. Of course, on your company page, it'll be you posting, you and the admins um, and editors. But for the groups, anybody that comes into the group, they're able to post 
not just comment. They can ask questions, they can post photos. And you'll be able to manage all of that if you want to approve every post that comes in. That is a setting that you can use. Um, and then member request settings as well. You can put in different questions. When somebody requests to join the group, you can ask them questions. For example, you know, where do you live? If you have a group that you want only people in that specific location, that you know, maybe that certain city or state, you can have that be a question. So just kind of, you know, keeping the group limited to who you want in the group is another option. Now, if we go into settings, this is, um, you'll definitely want to make sure that you go into settings and select the group type. Most often you will just be general, but if you want to be buying and selling in this, you know, if you want it to be about buying and selling, that's, that's an option. Gaming, there's a few different options. Typically, we just leave our group at general. It's just kind of a place to communicate. You'll also be able to add a location if you'd like to. And since our fake flower shop is in New York, we'll go ahead and add a location because we want people who are in the area since we are just kind of a local, a local shop here. You'll be able to change the color of the group as well to create cons some consistent branding if you'd like. And before we leave this page, it is really important to change the web address. This will actually be what shows, if you look in the top URL bar, um, you'll see a bunch of numbers. If you go down to the web address, this will give you the option to change those numbers out and put in the name of your group. So it'll make that look a lot cleaner and just make it so that when you do share the group, it'll look, it'll look nicer. So this will be facebook.com slash groups Garden Pals New York. And then if you do refresh, you'll see that change. If we go to about, you'll see at the top that that has changed in the URL. All right, so let's take a look at a couple other groups just to give you an idea. So maybe you'll you'll type in um, the the type of group that you are. So in this case, gardening. We'll search gardening and then we'll select groups on that top menu and we'll be able to see all of the gardening groups. And maybe click on a couple to join. And this is an example of a group that has questions set up. So they want to make sure that the people joining the group are relevant to the group before approving. So we'll just X out of there because we don't necessarily need to join right now. But as you see, there are a list here of different groups that we could join to connect with other like-minded people potentially recruit them for our group and also just you know kind of see what else is going on in that particular uh, area so in this case gardening just see what other people have to say maybe we'll learn something so this is a good example of a public group so we're actually able to see the posts and the members right off the bat before getting approved to join you can make your group private or public it's totally up to you um, so this is a case where we can scroll through and see people that we can then, um, we'll just open this up really quick here. We can go to their profile, send them a message, say, hey, we saw you were in this group. We have a group that's similar. We think you might enjoy it. Feel free to check it out and add a link to the group. Now that you have your nice, pretty little URL set up, you can, you can paste that right in the message send it their way. It's a really great way to um, increase your group numbers kind of right off the bat before people really are even aware of it. It's just a really great way to spread that awareness. So we won't actually send this um, because it is a fake group, <laughs> but just wanted to kind of walk you through how to do that.
Okay, and we'll actually go ahead and go back to the group and show you where members would appear. If you, you'll see about discussion and then members, this is where you'll be able to approve incoming members, as well as see all members of the group, message individual members, etc. So let's talk about Facebook events. So events are going to be a great way for you to interact with people who follow your page as well as spread more awareness about your page and your business. So you can host virtual events. This could be in the form of a webinar and the event on Facebook will be a way to promote the webinar, maybe an online concert, interviews, anything like that. You'll be able to create the event through Facebook and then link back to a website or wherever you're hosting that option. You can also, you know, if you're doing a Facebook Live, um, which we can get into a little bit later, you can create an event for that just for a way to, you know, talk a little bit more about it, get people interested. Or, of course, live in-person events. Um, if you create a, a Facebook event, that will be a, a really good way for people to learn more about the in-person event. They can get reminders. Um, they can find out about pricing, times, all of those details in the Facebook event. It's also a really good way to host giveaways and contests. So if you create the event, um, and we'll kind of walk through how to do that, you can give details about a contest that your business is running. And by showing interest in the event, people um, then can get entered in the contest. Just a really great way to promote a bunch of different things that your business, you know, will potentially be doing to um, to promote the brand, promote certain products, or you know, like we said, even live in-person events and giveaways and contests. And you know what, actually, now that we're, um, let me get back to the page, let's jump over into one more detail. You'll see add a button just under your cover photo. Let's go ahead and change that out. So there are a couple different options, just depending on the type of business that you are. Um, you know, it might be more important that people just email you. Maybe it's important that they visit your website. You'll just want to determine kind of the primary purpose of your page and change that button. So in this case, we'll do contact and send a message. So this is a great way for people once they are on your page to just quickly, quickly shoot you a message. Maybe they need, want to ask a question, ask about a product. All right, let's go back to events. So on the left hand side, you'll see the event tab. Create event. And keep in mind that these events can be something that you do weekly. They can be something you do monthly. Um, you know, it's, it's really up to you. They are a really good way to promote your brand and business. So we do recommend doing an event, whether it's a giveaway, um, a Facebook Live, a live event, when we're able to do live events again, um, you know, as often as you're able, but it, this is really up to you. There's no right or wrong answer here um, as far as frequency. So we'll change the cover photo. We'll go back to Canva and create a design there. Again, we'll just be able to search Facebook event cover and the size will come right up. So in this case, we're going to create a f event for learning how to um, create a bouquet. So we'll do this as a, a webinar or a Facebook Live. It'll be a virtual event. But again, just something for our followers or for new followers. Um, it's something to give back to them and a way to create engagement and interest in our brand. So we'll go ahead and upload that new photo. We'll enter an event name and location. 
and a description for the event. Now, because this is a virtual event, um, and probably in your case it will be right now too, you can just leave the location blank and just specify in the name that it is a virtual event or in the description. So we'll say it's going to be a Facebook Live event. And then just create an engaging invite. If this is shared among people who don't know about your company or your brand yet, you'll want this description to just be something engaging that catches their interest. And you can also share the event um, in your group, share it in other groups if it's not a competing company. <laughs> You'll also choose the category and the frequency on this page. Let's just finish up our description here. Okay, looks good. So for the category, and just select the thing that is closest to what you are going to be discussing or what your business offers. And then the frequency. So this could be a one-time event. Maybe this is something we're going to do a class like this weekly, monthly. If it is a recurring event, you'll just make this one and Facebook will actually keep repeating it. You won't have to go in and make this each week or month or you know whatever you determine. So we'll just set this as a one-time event. We'll enter the time, the date and time. And then you can also add co-hosts if there's another business or another person that you'd like to collaborate with. That's a really great, great way to increase your reach with the event because they'll be able to share the event as well on their business page or their, um, you know, however they're tip currently promoting their business and what they're involved in. You'll be able to reach all of their followers, friends as well. All right. And then if you do um, add keywords, that'll help with the searchability too so that people can find the group easily. Okay, let's talk a little bit quickly about what to post. We want to kind of cover all different things um, during this training, this quick tutorial. Um, so as far as what to post on each different social media platform, that's important to keep in mind. And of course, if you're doing just one social media platform, um, this isn't quite as important, but if you are kind of spread across the board a little bit, or you have multiple social media outreach platforms, um, this is of importance because you'll want to not be sharing the exact same thing to every platform. So feel free to screenshot this, jot down notes. Um, as we're mainly talking Facebook in this tutorial, You'll want to do the things like behind the scenes photos, quotes, you know, fill in the blank, um, captions, true or false questions, share your blog posts, and of course, uh, just announcements that um, relate to your company. And then as far as how frequently to post, we, uh, we get this question a lot at Joseph Studios. This is a really good kind of template to use. And of course, feel free to occasionally kind of go off script. Um, but this is a really good way to just make sure you're not over posting on one specific platform or under posting. You want to post enough to create engagement, be worthy of the follow when somebody does decide to follow you, but without filling um, people who follow you without filling their news feed. You don't want to be showing up every you know five minutes. That gets a little overwhelming and it's a lot of noise. So again, feel free to screenshot this, jot down some notes. Um, and again, as we're talking Facebook, 
we recommend a minimum of three times per week. This way you're still kind of staying in front of people who follow you, creating that interest, keeping your name at the front of mind um, without being overbearing. So we'd say the maximum would probably be about 10 times per week. We wouldn't necessarily go over that unless there's, you know, some particular case where that makes sense. But typically I wouldn't recommend more than 10 times per week for a post. So we wanted to just share with you too, um, as we are kind of talking social media overall, as far as sharing more, sharing your business online and going more digital and virtual as that is really the way that the world is going. Um, we wanted to share LinkedIn image sizes with you. So feel free to screenshot this so that you have those handy. And then we'll throw up a slide here for Instagram image sizes. Again, the profile picture, post photo, and stories those are three um, that will be important to keep in mind when you are creating those visuals. And we'll do Twitter as well. So again, screenshot, jot these down. Okay, now that we've talked about how often to post and where to post what content, let's go back to Facebook to our business page and create a post. So here, as we mentioned, you'll share company updates, you'll share photos, memes. In this case, we're going to talk about a new flower that we just had in the shop. So we'll want to create a engaging um, caption here, and then we'll share a graphic as well. And plain text, posts are okay on Facebook. It is kind of nice to occasionally just throw one of those in. Sometimes it can catch people's eye if there is just copy um, and just, you know, a text um, post. But because we are all such visual people, it's really great to typically include an engaging photo as well or, or a custom graphic. And we'll actually go back into Canva to create a graphic in just a minute here to show you what that would look like. In this case, we're just going to um, share a picture of the new product that's in. We'll add a couple hashtags for searchability, and we'll talk a little bit more about those in just a minute here. And if you do have any questions about creating posts or custom graphics, feel free to reach out to us. We're happy to help. All right, so let's jump back into Canva quickly here. Um, so let's do a post about, um, we just had Mother's Day, let's do a post about a Mother's Day sale. So we'll go back into Canva, type in Facebook posts, and this template will come up that's the appropriate size. And we actually will just use the template that was created by the Canva designers for Mother's Day. And we'll go ahead and put in our custom colors, um, the name of our shop, and what our special is change it out to make it look like it is more on brand for our business. This is a really great way to make it look like your business is bigger than maybe you are by creating custom graphics that um, have your branding colors and your branded font, things like that. Um, it really speaks well for your business rather than just using, you know, all stock imagery or something that looks like it could be on, you know, anyone's page. This is something that's a little more specific to your brand if you're able to go in and, and create these graphics. And like we said, Canva is a really good way to make them um, 
It's just, it's just a really user-friendly way to make quick graphics. Again, this is something that we do all day, every day at Joseph Studio. So if you do need a helping hand with this, feel free to reach out. Another key note here is we did include the, um, you will want to include your, either your logo, your website, something that is specific to your brand on the graphic as well. So that if this graphic does get shared and maybe the um, original post with your copy doesn't get shared, that graphic will in a way be sort of like a business card for your brand. So once we have this design how we want it, we'll download and go back to our Facebook business page, write a post, upload the graphic, and use the caption to share more about uh, the Mother's Day sale that we mentioned in the graphic. So we did want to put in this slide too. Um, this is something that we created here at Joseph Studios. It's kind of how to create the perfect post. So a couple things that you will want to keep in mind. And we'll talk through those quickly here. And again, feel free to um, screenshot this, take down notes. So of course you'll want to use a captivating image with bright, thought-provoking images with minimal text. Um, it's great to create original images as we've been mentioning through Canva, Adobe Suite, however you um, want to create those rather than just resharing stock images. You'll want to brand the image by adding a company logo or a website and keep captions between two to four sentences typically with, of course, engaging copy and a consistent tone across all posts. This is important. You'll want the business image to be consistent throughout as well as the tone and kind of the personality of how you approach creating posts on Facebook. Using emojis is a great way to break up your text and add kind of like a personalized and fun touch to your posts. Use these sparingly, of course, if you are um, creating a business page or just really it depends on the type of business that you are. Maybe your business tone won't necessarily allow room for that, but if it is somewhat more lighthearted, it's a great, emojis are a great way to just kind of catch your eye and add personality to a post. You will want to use hashtags, three to five typically. I wouldn't go over five, especially on Facebook. Um, we use hashtags that are trending and are related to your posts. This will help more people find your posts on your business page. And then, of course, a strong call to action. Not every post will have a call to action, um, but the ones that do, you'll want to be per persuasive with that and put that at the end or the very beginning of your post. Um, and then a link to the appropriate page on your website or you know wherever it is that you're trying to get people to go once they have read the post. And a bit more on that topic, we'll throw up a slide here uh, with just kind of some bullet points on what to keep in mind when you are creating a caption for a post. Um, keep in mind your target audience. Who are you speaking to? What, what is the tone that they, you know, appreciate or relate with? Keep your brand voice consistent, but be engaging, clear, get to the point. Um, on Facebook, you don't necessarily want, you know, five paragraphs of copy. A couple sentences is a really great way to just get your point across and be clear without filling up uh, news feeds with a lot of text. And then have fun with hashtags. Again, just use hashtags that are relevant, but also something that people will potentially be searching for. So let's also talk a little bit about hashtags here for a moment. Brand hashtags are um, a couple different ways that you can use hashtags. Brand hashtags are a really great way to share a certain type of post, kind of consolidate that into one group. So for example, for our fake business, April May's Flower Shop, maybe we'd want to make um, April May's Flowers 
a brand hashtag. So we might start using that on posts that are, uh, you know, specific to our business or maybe company updates or maybe we'd want to create a branded uh, hashtag around a certain type of flower, a certain type of bouquet that we have. By using that hashtag on all those those posts that relate, so not every post, but all the posts that relate to that specific term um, or brand is a really great way to then, you know, let people know, hey, if you want to see more about this, click on this hashtag and all of those posts will show up. Also, hashtags, of course, as we mentioned, help with searchability. Uh, you'll People will find your business more if they're searching for, in this case, maybe they're searching flowers. If we've used that hashtag, um, hopefully we come up near the top of that search. And the more often we use it, the more likely that is to be the case. It's also a great way to create a contest. So if you are using, um, for example, in this case, maybe we're holding a contest for the person who can create the best bouquet at home. And if we create a hashtag around that contest, anybody who uses that hashtag will be able to go in and look at those, um, at those entries for the contest. Hashtags are also a great way to monitor your brand. So if you are asking people to use a certain hashtag or if there's a hashtag that is relevant to your industry, um, you can use social listening tools that we'll talk about to, to keep an eye on that hashtag and see when people are using it, what they're talking about, and what the tone is, you know, is, is it good or bad that they're sharing? I don't know. So this is just a good way to kind of keep track of what people are saying about your brand. Or a campaign. A campaign's another great, great way to use hashtags to separate out certain posts. So if you are running a campaign, um, and for this example, maybe we're running the, camp the Mother's Day sale as a campaign, we can use a specific hashtag on all the posts that relate to kind of consolidate those and just create more brand awareness and more awareness around that sale as well. So a couple different tools that we really like to use for um, finding the best hashtags are Keyhole, right tag, Social Alert, Hashtagify. We use um, Sprout for social publishing here at Joseph Studios, and that does have a really great listening tool built in. But if you're trying to search for the hashtags that will be best for your business, these are a couple great options. All right, so let's jump back into our business page and talk about a Facebook shop. So with Facebook shops, you can um, sell products or services right in the app. And we'll look at a couple different ways to do that. In order to create a shop, you will need a Facebook business manager. Um, and to create this, you'll just go to Facebook facebookbusinessmanager.com slash overview and create an account. The business manager is going to be a place where you can, um, where you can um, actually link a, a bank account so that you can have purchases right within the app. And it'll be a place where you can set up all of your product listings. In the business manager account, it does really walk you through the steps. If you do have any questions or need help with getting that set up, feel free to reach out to us at Joseph Studios. We're happy to help. Let's take a look at a couple different options as far as a, a Facebook shop and what that can look like. So Thrive Cosmetics is a really great example of a Facebook page that has their products linked to their website. So we'll go to their business page just to walk you through this really quick. If we go shop, it'll show their products. And when we click on the product, 
or buy, it'll actually take us back to their website. So they don't do the in-app shopping, but it's a great way to display their products um, to people within the app. But this will actually take us from here to their website where you can complete the purchase. So let's then look at an example of in-app purchases, um, another way that you can set up your store where people will just be able to purchase the product with ever, without ever leaving the Facebook app. So GigiPip is a really good example. We'll go to their Facebook business page here and just give you an idea of what that looks like in their shop. So you'll see from here the products listed out in their store. When you click on the products, it'll actually just take you to a checkout within the app. So you can add to cart and purchase right from Facebook. So either way works. This is really kind of a personal preference. Um, we do like with GigiPip that you don't have to leave the app. That's, you know, there's less clicking through. Um, for customers to make a purchase. But if you want everything centralized and if it's easier for you to really track everything on your website and you have a website, that's a great option. This is a really good option if you don't have an online store and you want to just use Facebook to start selling your products. All right, let's go back to our business page here. And let's talk quickly about um, messages. Facebook messages are going to be one of the ways that people will be able to reach out to you once you have your business page. So you'll want to do a few things. You'll want to make sure that you have automated messaging turn on. If there's a question that you think you'll get frequently, you can go in and edit the automatic messages so that if people ask this question, they receive a reply immediately so that you don't have to monitor those. You can also go into this dashboard to see your inbox for Instagram, for Facebook, and just make sure that you're staying on top of those messages and replying as quickly as possible. People will notice that on your Facebook page. They'll see um, on the right-hand side, it'll show how often it typically takes for you to reply. And this is just something that you'll want to keep up on so that that number looks good. You'll also be able to um, look at your insights on your business page. Take a look at who is looking at the page, um, how many views you're getting, all sorts of great analytics in there as far as tracking people on the page and just kind of the impressions, the reach, the audience. Um, it's always really good to keep tabs on that as well so you can see what's working and what isn't. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about ads as well. So Facebook ads can be used in a number of ways. Uh, we can promote our page, promote a website, boost a post, or get more leads. So there are a couple different options. And this again is really however you determine is best for you to use it. We do recommend, recommend boosting posts occasionally. Um, and honestly, on Facebook, if you throw, you know, $20, $25 at, a, at boosting a post, that can be a really great way to reach more people um, based on location, interest, and just grow your reach and the number of followers and the people who are just aware of your business. You can also promote the page as a whole um, or your website if you do have a, a website. And there are a few ways that you can... Um, break down targeting, which is really important. You can target by location. There are some demographic targeting options that you can do or interests. So in this case, for April May's flower shop, we could actually target people who are interested in gardening or home decor, or interior design, things like that, something that might relate back to our business. And we can also, because we are, in this case, um, we made the business in Buffalo, New York, we can target within, you know, do a 30 mile radius. Those are the only people we want to see this post when we boost it. So a couple of really great options for targeting through Facebook ads. 
And again, just another really good way to build brand awareness. Um, and actually, another reason we rec recommend boosting a post is you'll have more people interacting and liking the post, and you can actually invite those people to like your page. So it does grow followers as well, not just likes and engagement on that particular post. And then we'll go briefly back and talk about the automated messaging. We did want to just throw up a slide here with a couple different uses for that because we, I know we only touched on it briefly. So a couple of ways that you can use the automated messaging, um, you can have an away message. So if someone does send you a message on Facebook and maybe it's the middle of the night and you're not replying, uh, they will get a message that you can set up and you can put you know, whatever text you want that message to be. And, you know, it can just be an, a message saying that we've received your message, can't wait to talk, we'll be back to you shortly. And this will actually help with that number that we talked about as far as how long it takes you to reply to, um, to, to messages. So that's very important. Instant reply kind of works the same way. This might be something that they will immediately get that, but maybe you'll get back to them soon. Maybe it is within business hours, but you want them to have that acknowledgement that you did receive the message and you'll be in touch shortly. Also, if somebody um, requests contact information, that might be something that you want to have set up as an automated message, as it is a question you might get frequently, and it could just be helpful to have that written out into an instant reply. Location requests are another, you know, another one that you might have people asking a lot, where are you located? If there is any type of verbiage like that in the message, Facebook can recognize to send the location, um, the message that you set up for the automated response to when somebody asks that question. So again, feel free to screenshot this um, and play around a little bit with the messaging. This is uh, something that you can change over time. And just uh, whatever questions you're finding are most frequent, you can create automated messaging around those so that you don't feel the need to, you know, to reply instantly every time if you are getting a lot of similar messages. I did want to show you also briefly what it looks like if you are trying to take, if you've been using your personal profile as sort of a business page and you want to take that information from your page and transfer it over to a business page, you can actually download the information that you've used on your personal profile. You can download photos, um, posts, contact information, things like that into a file. So this might be a good way to just kind of make that transition a little bit easier if you are trying to go from using your Facebook profile as sort of a business outreach to a business page, which we, of course, recommend using the business page always. But if you're trying to make that transition, this is just another way um, to make that a little bit easier on you. All right, so as we're wrapping things up here, we did just want to leave you with a couple um, other tools that we really like. So for social planning, as far as maybe taking a look at what you should post, maybe scheduling things out, we have a couple recommendations. Um, Hootsuite, HubSpot, Buffer, and Later are all great tools for scheduling posts out for the week. Um, if you don't want to be scheduling, you know, spending that time day to day, this is just a really great way to maybe spend Friday or Monday preparing your posts for the week and scheduling those with these tools. Um, at Joseph Studios, we really like Sprout Social for scheduling. It's a really great tool with analytics, listening, and scheduling all built in. This is, you know, probably more so a great tool for a marketing agency than a a um, personal business, but we did want to just make mention of that as well. And then again, Loomly, Buffer, and Later are all great options as far as scheduling posts out. 
So we wanted to wrap this up with a little bit of a Q&A. Um, these are just some questions that we've seen in the past, questions that we've received frequently that we wanted to briefly answer for you all. So we often have people asking, how can we as a business like another business's Facebook page? You may have already discovered this can be a little bit tricky to like the page, not as yourself, not as your personal profile, but as your business. So to do this, you'll go to the other um, page, click on the more button that's located directly under the page and select like is your page. There's going to be a drop down feature in which um, you can select if you're liking the Facebook business page as your page or your profile. Another question, it seems like only some of my Facebook fans see my posts. Why does Facebook do this? Is there anything we can do about it? So yes, uh, Facebook recognizes that each user has a lot of different connections to friends, family, and businesses who are all sharing content. So to avoid kind of overwhelming individuals in the newsfeed, um, there are newsfeed algorithms which deliver, you know, the right content to the right people, just really depending on what they interact with. Um, we actually have a YouTube video about this on our on the Joseph Studios YouTube channel. Definitely check that out. It talks a little bit about the algorithm and what you're engaging with on Facebook, how what you're engaging with really determines what you see in your newsfeed. So one thing that you can do as a business to increase your chances of being seen in a newsfeed is to use video. Um, Facebook's placed a huge emphasis on video content, especially video using the Facebook live streaming feature, but video is often given priority. Um, you can also make sure that you are using content that is trending um, so that it will be shared in the algorithm. Is it possible to see who's actually checking in at our business on Facebook? So check-ins are important to getting your business found on Facebook. Um, when a user checks into a business or includes the business as a location in a Facebook post, their friends will see that activity in their newsfeed. So it's just a really great way to spread awareness of your business. The more people checking in, the more opportunities you'll have to be discovered by other Facebook users. Unfortunately, you can't see who is actually checking in at your business. What Facebook will show you on your business page is the number of people who are checking in over time. So while this might not be exactly what you're looking for, it is helpful to see which days, weeks, or months you're seeing the most people checking in. It'll also give you some insight into how your Facebook activities coincide with these numbers. So of course, that might look a little bit different right now as we're all sheltering in place and businesses are kind of closed down, but that is something to keep in mind going forward. Another question, I don't understand engagement rate. Some posts receive a ton of clicks, but Facebook tells me that not as many people saw it. Why does this happen? Um, so the engagement rate metric makes understanding the success of a post quick, quicker than really in the past. Um, Facebook calculates the official engagement rate by the number of clicks, like shares and comments, and the number of people who saw the post, so the reach. So the outcome really illustrates the portion of your audience that's engaged with your content, um, which indicates the quality and success of your posts, of course. Facebook then uses that data to determine how many fans see future content that you share on your Facebook business page. So for example, if one post is reaching a significant amount of people but not producing a lot of engagement, the Facebook algorithm marks the post as lower quality too many low quality posts hurt your chances of appearing in your fans' news feeds in the future. So another reason to just create really engaging content so that you do have that engagement and your posts are shown more frequently. Um, so again, as we mentioned, when you focus on providing content that's relevant and interesting, entertaining for the audience that you know you're reaching, you should see engagement rate go up. This is something that we focus a lot on at Joseph Studios. If you do have any questions, again, feel free to reach out. Um, and a final question, is it possible to merge multiple Facebook pages? I have two pages that I want to combine, but I'm worried about losing all the work I've done so far. So for a lot of small businesses, getting started on Facebook isn't always a clean process. And we have seen many small businesses unintentionally end up with multiple pages. If you're an admin for multiple pages, there is a simple solution. Um, actually at the top of, if you go to the top of the page you want to keep and click settings, 
make sure you're using Facebook as yourself, not your business. There is a merge pages option and you can request to merge duplicate pages. Facebook will then combine all of your likes, check-ins, all of that content that you don't want to lose, but will permanently remove all the other content, posts, photos, username, etc., from the page you merge. So the page you want to keep will not change except the addition of new likes and check-ins. So that's a really great option for merging the two.